Hey and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing a subsurface skin effect as you can see in the example here. So the first thing I should mention is we're in Cycles Render. Also make sure that the video resolution is the same as the movie clip that you're going to use and also that the video resolution is at 100% as well. So let's change this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor and then go ahead and open up your movie clip. So once you've opened up your movie clip, we need to do a couple of things. The first is to set the scene frames, which will set the timeline to be the same as the movie clip. Then if we hit prefetch, this will prefetch the movie clip and then we'll be able to scrub through this here and see what it does. So if this purple line doesn't fill up all the way, what you need to do is go to file, then user preferences, go over to system, and then just scroll down, and then down here where it says memory cache limit, so just increase this, and then you can go ahead and save your user settings. Give this a prefetch and it should fill up all the way. Okay, so for this effect, we're gonna have uh, maybe some subsurface skin here, maybe change the eyes as well. So to do this, we're gonna need some tracking markers. So let's go ahead and add some tracking markers. So for the motion, we can leave that at location. For the match, I'm going to change this to previous. Also, I'm going to check normalize. I also want to go down here to where it says marker display. So check search size. And then if we hold control, then left click. So we just added a tracking marker. Now if we press S, we can scale this up. And what I want to do is try and, if we can see the pattern here, this is what Blender is going to track. And then within this whole area, Blender is going to try and find this simple pattern. So we don't want this to be too big. The bigger this is, the longer that it will track, especially if you have quite a few tracks on it as well. So keep that in mind. Make sure you keep this area size here, scale it down. I'm gonna press G, just move this over. So once you're happy with the size, you can press this button here, which is copy from active track. Anytime we add in a new track, it's gonna be the exact same settings as this last one, which is good. So I just wanna go over here, control left click. Just move this over. Now to press A to deselect and then press A to select them both. Go down here and we want to track these forward. So they tracked really well there for the eyes. We're going to need a couple more tracks. Now I'm going to control left click this area here. I'm going to scale this up. For this side, I can't use hair since the nose goes in the way so I want to try and use the eyebrow control left click I'm gonna to have to scale this up quite a bit so hopefully blender will track this if it doesn't I'm gonna to have to find a different area but let's give this a try so select this one and select this one track these forward so I'm just gonna create a couple more tracks and then this is gonna be for the face. So the way this works, I'm gonna to need to create four tracks. We already have one here. So let's go ahead and create three others. And I'm gonna track it in a sort of square pattern. So you'll see what I mean in a second. Control left click, I scale this way up. I scale this down. And then I'm gonna try and use this part of the face. Again, Blender should uh, find this pattern pretty easy. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for over here. See how well Blender copes with that. So now let's track these, press B. Since I'm on the end frame, I'm just gonna track these backwards. So since those tracks were bigger, they took a little bit longer, but tracked pretty well, so we can use them. But this one here, I think we need to retrack, so let's just delete that. I'm gonna try again, scale this up. Uh, but that's fine, so now we can go ahead and create the masks. So change this to masking mode. And the first mask, and let's start with the eyes. So right click and select the marker, left click to add the 2D cursor, shift A, just add in a circle. So then we can either go down here and change the settings like the size and location, or if we go down here to the pivot point, we can change this to be bounding box center. 
So now we can actually press S and this will scale this up nice and easy for us. So I'm going to press G just to move this in. So I'm just going to position this and scale it to be something like that. And then since this tracker is already selected, we know this because this tracker is white. If we right click and select any other tracker, we can see which is selected. So again, make sure you select this tracker here for the eye, then press B to use the box select and then left click, just drag all these, select this. Now if we press Control and P, we've just made a parent. If we just scroll this, we can see what we did. Made a parent, so when we play through, the eye stays to the tracker. So that looks good. Do the same thing for this side. Make sure we're on the first frame. Right click, left click, Shift A, add a circle. Just reposition this. And, and you don't need to worry about the overlapping. We're gonna add another mask for that in a second. So we have the marker selected and we already have the circle selected. So let's press Control P. Now this is parented as well. Make sure it sticks. If you need to make adjustments, you can go ahead and do that. So now we have the eyes done. Let's go ahead and name them. So now I need to create another mask. So this will be to blend in the eyes. So we get rid of the overlapping sections. So hold Control and then left click. And then to close this, press Alt C. And then what I'm going to do is just press this plus button here, which add a new layer within the same mask. So in fact, let's, <laughs> let's rename this. So this is going to be the eyes mask, which will make sense later on. If it doesn't make sense now, don't worry about it. So we've added one first layer here within this mask. Let's go ahead and create another layer just to keep these separate. Control left click and press Alt C. Okay, so now what we need to do, if we press A to select them both, press V and then choose automatic. So changing it to automatic will give us this nice curve. We only need to worry about where the parts, where the eyelid meets the eye. So all this section here, we're not even going to need, so we don't need to worry about, but I'm going to tidy it up just so it looks better. And playing around with these handles uh, can be a bit of a pain until you get used to them. But after a while, <laughs> they've become easy to use. So just play around with them. So that looks okay. Let's go ahead and tidy this one up too. So this one's a little bit trickier. What I need to do is just drag this one down, this one up, pull it here. Again, finding these curves or finding the positions is something that you will get used to. Uh, but now we've got that, that looks okay. I need, so now let's go ahead and parent these to the trackers. So we create this track here for this mask. So select this one here, press B and just select this one mask, this layer here. Then we press control P just like we did before. This will now be parented. Let's right click, select this tracker, then press B, select this mask and then press control P. So now they're both parented, but when you play through, you'll see that the eyes, uh, you'll see the masks, they'll slip away from the position. And that's because of the track, it's parented to this, so it's actually following this track where in reality it should be track, tracked a bit closer like this. But even this one's not perfect, and you'll see as, as I zoom in, we can see this is out of position. So it's very simple to fix. All we need to do is so just jump to the last frame. If we scroll our middle mouse wheel we'll re to reveal this section here. If we click this button, which is the automatic keyframe, every time we move this now, it'll add a keyframe. So if we just press A to select all of them, press G, and then without actually moving anything, I'm just gonna hit return. And then this will set the first keyframe. Now, if we jump to the first frame, so they're out of position. Now I'm gonna reposition these. Looks okay. And again, we don't need to worry about the side here since we're only it's only going to be affecting the actual circle mask that we added. Same thing for this one. There's not much movement on this eye, so I'll just drag this down a bit and then drag this up here. So now we have the eye masks done. We can go ahead and turn this automatic keyframing off. I'm going to go back to the first frame. And then I'm going to change this from the masking to the tracking mode. And then what I want to do is press A to deselect this and then press, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to select this one, hold shift, right click and see these ones here as well. 
Now if I go to solve, we have this plain track option here. Just open this up. Now just press create plain track. And we just add this square here. So if we play through, pretty good. Let's just reposition this. Again, since we've changed the pivot point, I can press S to scale it. I'm just gonna move this around. So now we have this and it's also selected. Again, let's jump back to the first frame. Go back to masking mode and we need to create a, a new mask. And this is gonna be the cheek. So this is gonna be the mask for where the subsurface effect is gonna be. So let's control left click. I'm gonna create maybe a shape like this. Now we've got this, I'm gonna press A and then press A again. Press V, automatic, that looks pretty good. So now we have this selected and we have this tracker, this planar track selected as well. I'm gonna press Control and then P. So now this mask is parented to this uh, planar track. So now when we play through, so now we have this motion, which looks pretty good. So now we're done, we just need to add all the effects. Change this from the movie clip editor to the node editor. And then as always, we change this to the scene tab. To see these nodes, we need to check use nodes and also make sure you check backdrop as well. If day, go to output, add a viewer node, connect this up and we don't need this render layer. We can delete this. Shift day, go to input, movie clip and then plug these in. And then what we can do if we select this icon here and then select the movie clip that we're using. So for the eyes, it's pretty simple. And we've, we've covered this in previous tutorials. So I'm just gonna go a bit quicker, um, but I'm just gonna show you how to do that. If we shift A, go to color, add in a mix. I'm gonna drop this one onto the bottom string and then connect this up to the view node. Shift A, input mask. Select the mask icon, then choose eyes color, which is the first circles that we did. And then if we plug this into the factor, so we can see where the area is being affected, but we need to apply this second mask just to shape these and make them look better. So what I'm gonna do is shift A, go to converter, add in a math node, just drop this here, and select this mask, shift D to duplicate it, and then just change this mask to the eyes mask, so the, so the second mask that we created. And then if we plug this into the bottom, so right now the circles are being added to the second mask that we created, which is not what we want. We want to change this. We change it from add to a multiply. And there we go, we've got the shape that we want. So this was before and this is after. But it needs a little bit of blur to make it look better. So shift A, filter, blur. I'm gonna add this after the multiply node. I'm just gonna give this a small amount of blur, maybe four or five. And then for this one here, I wanna add a dilate erode node, shift A. Go to filter, dilate erode, just drop this in. And what we can do with this, if we change this to feather, we can actually reduce the um, the area here, but we'll come back to that in a second. So let's carry on with the color here. There are a couple of ways we can add color to this, to the eyes. If you just wanted to simply add some color, you could do that. Um, you could do it, you could do that in a number of ways. Um, but for this example, I wanna just bring this original image, or this original movie clip, plug this into the bottom, and then Shift A. I'm gonna add in, go to color, add in a gamma node, just drop this on the bottom here. So make sure this is mix. And then if we drop this gamma node down, we can make these eyes a bit brighter, a bit whiter, like this. And then if we Shift A, color mix we can add in any color you want i'm going to change this to either multiply or overlay and playing around with these blend modes will give you different effects so, so make sure you play around with it and try and find one that you like but i'm going to maybe use overlay and darken this a lot we zoom in as i mentioned before we want we added that dilate erode node to maybe blend these in a bit better so let's just find that dilate erode node which is here and then now if we reduce this distance into the minus, so maybe minus seven, 11. So now we have some of that original color come back, which is pretty good. 
So some of you might not like that the black is, uh, is colored as well. So let's go ahead and fix that. You could go back to the movie clip editor and add another couple of masks and just add this into this setup here. But we already have a circle, which is this original circle here. Um, instead of going back and creating a whole new mask, we can use this instead. So, so I'm going to shift A, go to converter again, add a math node. So we could probably add this probably before the blur. And then I'm going to take this node again. I'm just going to feed this into the bottom. And now we need to reduce the size. Dilate erode node, shift D. Just drop this in here. And I'm going to change this to distance. So, so you might not be able to see what's happening. If I show you the original circle, which is this, then if we use the dilate erode node, it just makes them smaller. And then it's being added to this original one. So we don't want it to add, we want it to subtract. So I'm going to change this second math node to subtract. And then we get this. So they're a bit too big. Let's reduce this. We need to wait for the compositor to catch up. So that looks okay. Again, you can add some blur to the inside of the edge here as well. Um, and it takes a little bit longer since we're dilating. I don't know why this one node then makes it a lot longer to render, but it takes a little bit longer. So maybe you want to go back to the uh, movie clip editor, add a couple of new circles for the, for the black parts of the eyes. It's entirely up to you if you want to do that. But that's the eyes done. Um, let's tidy this up since it's quite a few nodes just for the eyes section. So press A to deselect everything. Press B. I'm going to select all of these and then press Control J. If day, go to color, mix, drop this onto the composite node, connect this up to the viewer node. And then what I want to do is, as you can see, the composite has taken a lot longer because of this added part here. So what I'm going to do is just press mute. I'm just going to mute it. And then later on, I'll come back and unmute it. It's just taking a lot longer and I don't need it. So and I don't need to see it for now. So yeah, just mute that. <laughs> now we have this, I can go ahead and shift A. So I'm going to add in a texture, which we're going to create. So input, texture, we're in the scene tab. Let's change this to the textures tab. Then we want to change this to the world properties and then click new. And then the last thing we need to do is just check use nodes. And then if we scroll out, we'll eventually see them, which is these two nodes here. So we can name this if we need to. Delete this texture here, shift A go to textures and for this one again you can use anything you want but for me I'm going to use marble I've already tried this before and I got something that looked okay plug this in so again playing around with these will give you different effects and maybe spend a few minutes and find something that you like but I'm going to change this to original Perlin change the size just be something a bit bigger maybe maybe 0.9 maybe a bit more and then the turbulence, I'm going to go crazy with this, maybe 13. Okay, so now we've got this, let's go back and actually use it. So go back to the scene tab. And now we have this, we want to plug this node into here. So we take the color feed, plug this into the bottom. And then if we select this icon here, we can and then choose this texture. So now we have this. The next thing we need to do is shift A. Go to input, add in the mask, just drop this up here. This will be the cheek mask. Plug this into the factor. Now we have this, which doesn't look too good right now. Uh, we will need to blur this, so shift A, filter, blur. I'm gonna come back and add some blur to this in a moment, but for now I'm just gonna leave it as it is. We wanna change this mix node. This one I'm gonna use dodge. So we use dodge, we're kinda of crazy. And I'm going to move this around maybe as well. So it needs a little bit of work. So let's shift A, go to color, RGB curves. I'm going to drop this in here. And then for this, what I want to do is these brights maybe are a bit too bright. If that's the case, we can just drag this down, select this point here and just drag it down. So we get something a little bit more like that. And then we can also drag this up and make it a bit brighter in the middle. So that looks good. So now I just want to change this mask. If we go back to the movie clip editor, what I want to do is just maybe scale this up, press S. A 
looks a bit better. So that looks good. And if we go to this blur, maybe add quite a bit of blur with this, maybe 100. Yeah, I like that. So this is going to act as our base illumination. So then we're going to add some images on top of it for veins. And if you want to add some parallax movement, we can do that. Another thing you can do, if you want to make this sort of glowy bit more dynamic, you can actually keyframe the offset. So just press I to add a keyframe in one of these and then just move it around. Or the same thing for if we go back to the material for the turbulent, you press I to add a keyframe and then just move ahead somewhere and play around with this and then press I to add a keyframe again. So now between these two values, you'll get this sort of moving effect. If you want that, go ahead and do that. If you don't, you can leave it as it is. I'm not gonna have that moving effect here, but it's entirely up to you. So, so now it's just a case of adding in some veins to make it look, to give it some depth and make it look a little bit more creepier. So press B, I'm just gonna move these out of the way. And again, we can add a frame for this. But when you play through the video, you'll see that the effect stays the same, or it stays in the same position. We actually want it to move as well. Um, and the way we can do that, we just jump to the first frame. And then here, so this effect, what we want to do is Shift A, go, then go to Distort, Translate, and then just drop this in here. And then what I can do is Shift A, go to Input, Track Position, and then drop this in here as well. And then what we can do with this, if we just select this icon, then select this movie clip, select this to be the camera, and then this one, we can choose the track. Now, if we use the track from, from over here, it wouldn't look too good. So I'm gonna go back to the movie clip editor and find out what the tracks are, which one of them to use. So we could use this one, or we could use this one, or this one, it's entirely up to you. But we need to know the name of it. So I'm gonna go back to the tracking mode and if you look up here, so when I right click on a track, it says what the name is. Maybe let's use track four. Go back to the node editor. And then for this one, we want to use track four. And then let's plug the X into the X, the Y into the Y. And then for this position, if we choose relative start, we have this. Now it doesn't look too good since it's moved. I want to move this back again, so go to offset and just move this into so now when we play through the background will stay which is what we want shift a go to color add in a mix node and we're going to add the veins and shift a go to input add an image and i should mention every time we add an image like we did with this material here we need to add a translate node and a track position node just so they moves with the uh, with the person so keep that in mind for this i'm going to go to open so you can go ahead and create these images um, in Photoshop or any kind of uh, photo editing software or go online and find some images. What I'll do is I'll leave some links in the description to some I find. So we plug this in. For this mask here, which is the cheek mask, we just want to take it from the blur from, and just plug it into the factor. Now we have this. It's a bit small, so let's shift A, go to distort, transform, plug this in. I'm going to scale this up maybe to two. See how that looks. And then just move this over. And then if we go over to the mix node, we can change this from mix to multiply. We can see it's very sharp. So shift A, go to filter, blur. I'm going to plug this in before the transform node. Let's just blur this a small amount. So you can keep the veins black or you can add some color to them. Um, or you can also fade them in as well. So if you want to do that, shift A, go to color. RGB curves, just drop this on in the end here. If you want to just change this and make it a bit more blended in. So if you just drop this down, you make them darker. If you bring this up, you can make this a bit fainter, a bit more blended. And I'm going to shift A, go to color, mix, drop this here, maybe a red color. Change this to add. And then if we check clamp, and then we can also blend this in more if we use, if we go shift A, converter, I go to color ramp, drop this onto the mask. And then what we can do if we select this white color here and then just drag this down, we can blend these in and make it a little bit more blended. Shift A, distort, we can use a translate node and drop this in here. Shift A, go to input, 
track position or again we can go over to the first track position which was over here just copy control C then press control V press G and just move this over here to use this just so we don't have to fill in these details again we can just connect this up like that and now when we play through these veins will stay the same if you wanted a little bit of parallax movement you could use a different tracker maybe one over here and it would give it a little bit of a different movement or if you wanted to keep them the same it's entirely up to you how you do that so now it's a case of just adding some more veins which is the same process i'm going to add a mix node change it to multiply add another image so essentially just copying this and then changing the image and the position uh, once i've done that i'm going to add some color grading but again it's entirely up to you what colors and what themes you go with and then once you're ready to render this out if you can make sure you go over here and then if you want to render this out as a PNG image sequence, that's fine, leave it as PNG. But I'm going to change this to FFmpeg video. Then go down here to encoding. And then for the presets, if we choose H.264 in MP4 format, we can go to the output. Make sure you set where this is going to be saved to. And you can go ahead and hit animation. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this a like. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good holiday and see you next time.